There's a time in every quilter's life when you begin to think, I need a new sewing machine. It's a pretty exciting time shopping for a new machine and you can be bedazzled by the thousands of stitches available or become overwhelmed by all the choices. Before you put your money down, be sure that you've asked yourself these eight questions. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. When you started quilting, you possibly pulled your mother's old sewing machine out of the basement, or found one at a garage sale, or grabbed an inexpensive one off of Amazon. And then you leaned in as you explored your new hobby. But now you're past the honeymoon phase and something is triggering thoughts of a new sewing machine. But as you're falling out of love and you're wanting to move on, you first need to ask yourself these eight questions. You don't want to spend your hard earned money on a new machine only to bring it home and find your results exactly the same. Do this test. Take three pieces of fabric, two and a half inches by seven and a half inches, and sew the three strips together. Then cut the block perpendicular to the seams into three equal two and a half inch strips. Spin the middle piece and sew them back together. Now take a good look at your block. Is it square? Are your seams straight? Are your pieces aligning tightly? If the answer is no, unfortunately, it's you and not your machine. And it's time to take a good look at your foundational skills of straight sewing, accurate cutting, and a good ironing technique. I have already made a video series about these skills, as well as several videos on blocks you can make from your scraps to practice on. And practice is the key to mastery. So when you bring your new machine home, you'll combine all the new features with your improved skills to springboard you to new and amazing projects. There are so many methods and techniques in quilting, but you need to put in the time to discover what fills your bucket. When you move beyond the straight stitch, what do you want your sewing machine to do? Is it free motion quilting? a really nice buttonhole, or maybe a good overlock stitch. And it's possible you want all three, or maybe none of them. You just want speed. Understanding what you like to do means that you'll invest your money in just the features that are best for you. In general, the more features on your machine, the bigger it will get. And not only do you need room for the machine, you need room for all the accessories that go with it. How much space do you have available? Grabbing a box to test out some sizes will give you a better idea than just measuring. And don't forget your working space. You'll have a chair and your project to manipulate as well. As you upgrade, you might find it more convenient to split the features that you want into two smaller machines so that you can tuck one away, or you need to change your sewing furniture so that a larger one can be moved around out of the way. Your dealer is an important connection to have. Ideally, they are a store that you can come to for honest advice, provide you with classes to teach you what your machine can do, and they can either service the machine or have a good relationship with a technician that does. Now, I know we're not all lucky enough to have a Bernina Jeff nearby, but knowing where there is someone similar within your driving range will save you so much pain and grief in the future. I have a friend that takes her machine to the cottage and uses the sewing center near there to do her yearly cleanings and service. I have another friend that when her mother comes to visit, they switch machines and her mother takes the machine back to the city to be serviced. It all works. Sewing machines are just like other electronics. It can be tricky to get them working well straight out of the box especially if you're moving from a manual system to an electronic one. 
And if you switch brands, sometimes they have a different way of doing things. Expect to devote several hours to your user manual to learn all the features. And I am speaking from experience on this one. I purchased my last machine just as I was moving. Between packing, moving, and setting up a new sewing space, I'm sure it took me at least six months before I had the time to do a deep dive in what my machine could do and how to do it. And be sure to sign up for the classes because they are full of tips and tricks that never make it into the user manual. The chances of buyer's regret is so much higher when the time is ticking. Like when your machine crashes 24 hours before you need to complete your parents' anniversary quilt. Now, before you're desperate is when you'll be wanting to do your research. Dealers, quilt shows, and conferences all have demo machines. Bring along test samples of the sewing that you like to do and take those machines for a test drive. Working with your fabrics in your colors will give you a better idea if the machine is right for you. Not only is quilting fun, quilting is good for you. And sewing machines are a really important tool that we use in our hobby. Having a good machine in good working order is key to that enjoyment. Unfortunately, we need to balance that with what we can afford. So start saving today to save for your next machine. Again, before you grow out of your current machine. Now you might be thinking you will never be able to afford your dream machine, no matter how many years that you save. Well, that may be true, but if you start saving now, you'll be able to repair and maintain the machine that you have now, or have the money on hand when an amazing deal appears for a second hand machine on Craigslist, eBay, or Facebook Marketplace. Tell all your friends and family that you're looking. That's how I found my last Bernina. And the good thing about buying secondhand is they usually come with a lot of accessories. During the declutter challenge, I found that many quilters were much better at acquiring new machines than dealing with the old ones. And many people had accumulated a stash of them. If your older machine is a manual one, I do recommend that you keep it to use as your traveler. That is the one that you take to retreats and workshops. Electronics are sensitive and the rough bumps and lumps of transport can damage them. So leave them at home and let the manual one do the work. If you already have a traveler, then you will need to find a new home for your current one. You can sell it, donate it, lend it to a friend. With the pandemic, there's a new appreciation for sewing machines and you might be surprised at how many people want them. The important point is to get a plan in place now, so it's not overwhelming later. And since your old machine will not be taking up valuable real estate in your sewing room, you'll have the space to enjoy your new machine. If you want to watch or review my videos on straight sewing, accurate cutting, and a really good ironing technique, I'll leave a link here to that playlist. And here's one for the scrap sampler blocks to practice on. Take care, and I'll see you next time.